Hello guys, I want to say welcome back to the bench, but I'm not near the bench. Anyway, happy Thanksgiving, as today is Thanksgiving, and uh, now as this video goes forward, everyone will know the exact day this was posted. Uh, today I'm going to do an update on my uh, food dehydrator that I use to dry my pieces in when I airbrush. And I use it quite a bit, particularly when I do my test videos for you guys. Um, I dry this stuff. I do everything in real time. I spray and then I dry it. And uh, when you see my videos, it's all done actually within the actual time that you see the video shot. And I, the re reason I'm able to do that is I, I dry the pieces really, really quick uh, with this food dehydrator. It's a, it's a great trick in the industry, we'll say. Now, I've done a video about this. Uh, it's almost a year now. Not quite a year, maybe. And I've gotten a lot of questions on it, so I figured I'd do an update because I've gotten a little better at it than when I first got it. So I'm going to give you guys a, a quick run through. And uh, again, plus guys who haven't seen it already, you'll get a little quick tutorial here. Um, this is uh, Innovation. Innovation, I think it is. Yeah, In yeah Ivation. I-V-A-T-I-O-N. Ivation. I got it off of uh, Amazon. I will put a link below um, for the unit. It wasn't a cheap one. This is about 100 bucks. Um 110 but uh, with Prime it shipped free it's a big unit it's very light I mean it's very light and um, mostly it's just a fan in a hollow area but it does the trick and the reason why I got such a large one is because I, you could put more pieces in it they had smaller ones but I couldn't really do much with it because of the size and with this I'm, I'm able to put car bodies in it and I'll show you that in a second and uh, rows and rows of parts which is awesome the lid on the front lifts straight off there's no hinge it just pops right off let me put it over here I don't want to hit the camera and it comes with all these trays there's even one on the bottom there's eight or nine of them here and uh, these are terrific I don't keep them in the unit actually I actually will keep them out hit the camera here there we go what I will do is hold on guys let me get these out of the way what I will do is I always leave one in if I'm running up to it with a, a piece, a car piece, or a spoon during my videos, you know, I'll keep it in the middle, like such. And sometimes if I'm doing a multitude of parts, I'll lay them out on here. Like when I do the, like the candy test, I did it over several colors. I'll pop them on here as I spray it, and I'll just walk in. I keep this in my other room, and I'll walk in with the tray and just plop the tray right in. All right, that's the... Uh, that's as far as the inside goes, and it's good because you can adjust it if you have other pieces that are fat. I can even put a, as I said, a car body. Let me show you. This is a car body I use to test all my colors on. See it? All the different times I test the paints is the enamels I've been testing. So see this? It goes right in. It fits beautifully. I couldn't do that with the smaller ones. And, um, and then below, I can still put even more parts. You can really adjust this well. You can even put him on the bottom and then put several shelves above the car, which is great. Now you can also take the car off of this piece and go even further down, but it leaves me the room, which is very important when doing a, a full paint. All right, so now let's put the slit on it so nothing happens to it. The control board is up here. I'll show you that at the end. Some people ask me about dust getting in because it does blow in. Um, gets the fresh air from out here before it uh, sets the warm air inside it so I'm gonna stand up here guys and I'm gonna flip this around all right here's the back it's pretty simple but you these are the vents you're going to see I personally being down here uh, in my basement I, I haven't had much dust believe it or not it's it's uh, kind of a it's a finished basement so it's kind of, I don't want to say dust free but it's, it's not dust flying around like your traditional basement but what you're gonna do here if, for those asking the question, and if those pick one up and still want to ask the question, you're going to get yourself one of these cheap air filters. You can get them anywhere. I think these came from Home Depot, maybe. And um, you get the cheapest one. It's not thick. It doesn't, it doesn't have that ripple to it, you know, the wave. You're going to mark it off. I did this one with a Sharpie already. See it? So we're just going to mark it off, and I'm going to cut it out. So just come right in with your standard scissor. That's it. All right, let me pause the camera and cut this piece out. All right, guys, I want to keep banging this camera. I'm working from behind it. Here it is. I cut it out. It's a perfect square. 
So yeah, doesn't matter which side you want to put her in against, but that's all you're gonna do. You're just gonna get uh, this is um, this is duct tape right here, white duct tape, and that's it. We're gonna tape it to the back. You still get the fan; it's gonna blow in. No dust will come in at all. As I said, I haven't had a problem with dust, but uh, for those of you that might have a dust problem, there is your solution. It's quick and easy and pretty cheap too. So now you are, hold on, one more piece of tape. You are dust free. Now I'm gonna show you the settings I've been using this thing at, all right? I'm gonna flip this back around. As you can see, it's really light, all right? Um, we are going to paint on a variety of different types of paints. I'll use this all clad candy. This is an enamel. Splash Mecca Red. This is a lacquer. We'll use a model air, which is an acrylic um, Maybe I'll even do some green stuff world this metal filter, which is a unique paint So I'll paint a few pieces. I'll put them in and in real time. I'll put it on We'll go about five minutes and then what I'll do is I'll take it out and I can give you guys uh, Real-time results to see how good this thing works and how fast it works so um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint those pieces. Um, I'll see you at the booth, and uh, we'll come right back. All right, guys, here we are back at the booth. Um, I'm standing a little further back than usual, but uh, anyway, we're gonna go with this uh, aluminum-covered spoon, black spoon. This has got the E7. Um, I think it's a chrome or a shine silver on it. In here, we have the all-clad enamel. Let's go ahead and cover this up. This is a really light blue. You can see it's starting to come on now. It's almost purple. But again, I just want to show you guys different types of paint. So we'll go with this, which is an enamel. There we go. Let's get it on heavy. Now enamels will take longer. You can actually uh, leave them in for a long period of time. This will get you um, so you can somewhat handle it, but it won't be fully cured unless you're gonna go the full length. Today I'm just gonna show you how to set your unit and uh, go from there. I'm gonna show you the times I recommend. How beautiful is that? That is nice. Looks purple through the camera, but it's actually closer to blue. Real nice. Let's, uh, let's try a quick over chrome. I don't even know if I got enough, but let's try it. it. Takes a while to build up. Yeah, there's plenty in there. Here it goes. Gotta go slowly on the last coat like this. All right, we'll see how it dries on. This is kind of going over, pretty, in particular like a primer because it went over another paint. This is just going over the plastic directly. So we'll check the results on that. All right, guys, I'll pause this. I'll go back at the uh, dehydrator and show you how we set this up. All right, guys, here we are back at the unit. I got the uh, spoons sprayed above. Let's pull the lid back off. All right. Probably only need one, obviously. And here's the one you just saw me paint. And right after that, I painted the red one. I painted the, this is the uh, Game Air or Model Air from Vallejo. Vallejo. And this is the uh, purple metal filter from, oops, there we go, from. Uh, Green stuff world. All right, we're gonna put the lid on it. All right, and here's what you're gonna do. Hold on one second while I get the camera to the control panel. All right, guys, I am back. We are looking down on it now. Here's your power button. Unfortunately, with these uh, type of displays, you're gonna get a flickering effect, but we'll see what we get. All right, that's not too bad. The LED lights are helping. Um, it starts off 10 hours. 
which is way too long. But we're going to start with temperature, which is right here. Starts at 158, way too warm for us. This is minus, this is plus. We're just going to go down on temperature. Make sure you have temp on. And then you go down 140, 131, 122 I like to do when I'm doing it quickly. So this we are going to put in for just five minutes, just five minutes. So you can do the timer if you want, or you can just go ahead and, uh, you know, it's not going to go in by, it's not going to go by uh, minutes. It's going to go by, you know, 30 minute increments, not, you know, one, two minute increments. But for us, we know, we know we're only in there for five minutes. And I'm only doing five minutes for the video. 30 minutes is a good, perfect amount of time. And, um, you should do fine at 122 degrees, 30 minutes, throw everything in. And um, when this reaches uh, 25 minutes, well, five minutes will tick by. And then uh, I'll put the camera back on and we'll pull her out and show you how dry everything is. Now with enamels, not so much the all clads, but an enamel like the uh, MCW and the uh, testers. Hold on, I got testers back here. There we go. You know, the old testers and the model master, these enamels. Um, for a nice full cure, you can either put in a hardener, a quick drying agent, and that'll get you down to about five to seven hours, eight hours in this. And um, if you want, you can go ahead and not even put the agent in it and put it in here. You know, I go overnight. I would go overnight at a lower temp. I would do about 113, 115. I say those odd numbers because that's what this goes to. It, it jumps to 113. It's really odd, the temperatures that it... It sets itself at. Um, I'm not sure if you hold it down, does it go into increments? No, see, it just goes in these odd increments. I don't know why. But uh, anyway, we'll let this sit. I'll pause the camera. I'll turn it back on in about three, four minutes. And we'll take it out in real time and I'll show you how nice uh, everything has dried. All right, guys, we're back in real time. It says 24, which means six minutes has passed by. Turn it off. And it uh, actually has like a cooling down period, like it's like 15, 20 seconds before the fan will actually turn off. Let's put this over here. Too much reflection. And here we go. Here is the uh, green stuff world. Dry. This is the model air. Model air. Copper, is this copper? Copper, yep. Fully dry. This is the Splash. Mecha Colors. Lacquer, hold on. Keep reaching behind me. Fully dry. This is over a primer, I believe. Yeah, I went over a gray primer. Those paints require a primer. All right. And the last one, which was all clad candy indigo enamel. It's a purplish blue. And, I mean, dry to the touch. It's got a little bit of a drag to it because it's an enamel, but you can work with it. You can actually, if you're building a kit, you can actually work with it. And if you're careful, you won't get any prints. The enamel I would keep in much longer. I would drop it down to like 100 temp or 98 and let it go for hours. Just let it go for 6 to 10 hours and all your enamels would dry. Now if I put a drying agent in this uh, Japan Dry, it's called a couple drops of that, it'll uh, speed up the drying. But to tell you the truth, it's pretty, it's pretty dry. It's really dry. I mean I'm rubbing on this. So, and there you go. And that's it. That's the simplicity and the awesomeness it is to have one of these units um, on your workbench. Not so much on your bench, but in your in your workroom. And I will put a link below. As I said, it's in the $100 range. I think it's 110 or something like that, 113 It's been a while since I bought it, but the price hasn't changed too much um, since I've gotten it. I think it's worth it. Like I said, I showed you the car bodies that can go in it. Um, if you want to do, like I said, quick dries, I go to the 120 range, 5, 10 minutes while I'm working. You just saw me in 5 minutes what we got completely fully cured as far as the, enamel, the acrylics go. Earlier, I said you had to wait a little bit for the paints to uh, settle up. I don't. After my testing and throwing them in there quick, I found no difference. So you can spray them and put them straight into the unit. 
no delay. You don't have to wait at all. I personally wouldn't wait. You could just throw them right in. That's what I've discovered. I found no difference. And um, and they come out perfect. All, everything I put in here dries just, just perfectly. So uh, I wouldn't worry about that. You can put them right in, close it, put on the time. Uh, I haven't gone over 120, whatever it is on this, 122, whatever that was. I haven't really had the need to go over that. And as you can see, it works perfect. And then I would drop it a little lower if I'm going to go a long period of time, particularly on a car body. Let me see. See, I'm starting to paint this uh, color, this enamel color for my um, my Mini. So on my Mini, I'm going to uh, paint this beautiful, beautiful pearl uh, metallic blue. I'm a, a pearl blue, and I'm going to make the whole body this. This is just a practice. This is under the chassis part. And... Um, I put this in you know, overnight and it came out, it was fully hardened, it's beautiful. And, and, and a fully hardened enamel is about the toughest finish you're going to get, the most durable. Anyway, that's it. That is my walkthrough uh, and update with my uh, dehydrator. Uh, if you're doing a lot of painting, highly recommended. Between this and that paint shaker I got recently, those are two pieces that get used um, quite a bit. If you want to see... If you're curious as to what's behind here, let me take this down. There we go. It's my Death Stinger. Look at that kit. Is that beautiful? And that is a monster of a kit. I mean, look at my hand in the corner. It's huge. It's like two, three feet across. And um, I want to show you this paint rack. Look at that. That's um, from um, Micromark. It holds 80 bottles. I'm going to put all of my... Uh, all of my wicked colors in there and it spins it's beautiful i just built it it comes on assembled in a little skinny box and uh, i showed you that on the top it also holds the mr color paints can you see that that's the size of the jars that it holds so anyway it holds them perfect so i'm going to get them down there and free up some shelf space by putting them on that spindle i thought that was pretty awesome and the company that makes this model kit the architect this is the uh they took an Iwata airbrush and made it into a spaceship, almost like Battlestar Galactica or something. And it comes with all the LED lights to, that lights it up. I just thought this was so unique. I was about to purchase one when the company wrote me a, an email and liked my channel. And they sent me this. And um, I'm going to build it and I'm going to show this off at some point. Uh, fantastic. Unique, unique kit. I like, uh, I like odd kits like that. And, uh, and my new just came in. Anyway, guys, I'm going on too long. Uh, I want you guys to have a great, happy Thanksgiving. I'm sure you guys have probably done eating by the time you see this video. If not, enjoy your meal. And uh, as I said with this unit, hold on, let me grab it one more time. There it is. The Ivation Food Dehydrator. Highly, highly recommended um, for your workroom. And... Um, that is it for the day, guys. I have a bunch more videos coming, hopefully another one for the weekend. And uh, until then, like the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And we will see you in the next video.